seats. These seats have been launched. Uh, these seats have been attached. We use a we use a fifth belt cup for washing feet. As we pull it down, we, we pre-strip the stimulated the seat, and as it's pulling down, it's pulling off any moisture that's on the outside of that seat and the seat ends. And after you'll see some milky water dump. We put that wash solution and that free milk into a separate chamber to get it to drink. Is that a big difference in snack cell? Their counts here are very similar to the counts in their other parts. We have that. We attach individual quarters, individual quarter milk. Is there a lot of maintenance issues with uh, the robotic milking system? Do they have a lot of man hours in getting cows to the milkers or having issues with breakdowns or milk wares or well there's, there's more daily maintenance on a robotic milker. A dirty robot doesn't work for it. So like the camera, you have to maybe clean the camera on a daily basis. If you can't see the teeth, you can't attach it. Uh, as far as the milking equipment, the, the meters and the pulsators, everything under the hood is similar to what you would have to follow. Take off cylinders, uh, diaphragms, gaskets. Yeah. What would be like, say, what would be the man equivalent for milking 575 cows? Is there two, two fellows that work here on a daily basis to milk that many? Or? Usually there's one. Chad's the main herdsman. Clayton is here as a summer intern. So Clayton's learning alongside Chad. And he's starting to take over some of the daily responsibilities when Chad's off. Um, as far as milking, Doyle figured they saved between 25 and 30 man hours per day of milking labor when they moved the cows into this farm. They had two double 12 bearing bones and a double 24 parlor. They shoved one of the double 12s down and basically the capacity of that parlor came up here. So he eliminated that milking staff for that other parlor. But we say between three and four cows. We had one cow in this barn, uh, he just was called this week, but she would visit the machine 18 times a day. <laughs> and the only thing I could think of was she thought her job was to clean up the bowl. Because she didn't get milk 18, she got milk two and a half or three. Do you have to feed the cows in these type of years? Um, feed is an enticement. And Doyle tried to challenge us with that. He turned the feed off, and his visits went way down. So the, the visits to the station went down. So the idea of the feed is more of an enticement. They'll feed two to 14 pounds of grain per cow per day in the barn, depending on stage electricity.
been doing these tours a little over two years, and anymore we, we come in the room and if we're in here 20 minutes, that's a long time. The real story is in the barn, watching cows. Answer or not, but what do you do if you have like a three TD cow? It'll it melt. It'll melt three TD cows, two TD cows. Does it you have like the information on Yeah, you tell the computer. I saw a one TD cow being milked here. <laughs> she didn't stay for the next lactation, but they milked her out for the rest of the lactation. Yeah. What's a somatic cell been running? Um, what well, Chad? I'm not sure. Uh, they don't post that on the board downstairs. But somatic cell in this barn is, is real close to the other barn. You know, if you look at a two and a half year average, they've been, they've been pretty much close to the same level. It's the same management, it's the same similar bedding practices. Now if she is if she has reached her expected yield, it won't reattach. I got some cows that do that. They'll yeah. pick it when they're getting close. Slow it up, pick it off. But it's neat to watch reattach how we can go around the units. That wasn't a good one. Does that floor flush itself? The cylinders are, um, I haven't had a problem with the cylinders. We've had problems in the other barn. We have sand in the other two stalls. And where we get a lot of rotation, where sand will get in under a bushing, we've had to replace some components because of the sand. It just wears it off. But these are hydraulic cylinders. We use, uh, it's like a vegetable grade hydraulic oil. So it cleans up the soil from water, pretty environmentally friendly. Yes? Do you guys think, like, do you lose a lot of time with the cows not moving out as quickly or coming back in? Um, or is it pretty steady? It's usually pretty steady. Now these cows may be, uh, you know, it's, it's hot, so we don't get as good of cow traffic when it's really hot. But generally, um, cows are moving in and out. I mean, they know their way around the barn. Some, some timid cows will stand back and wait for a boss cow to go through. Some cows will wait. They, they pick the time of the day they want to be milked. Some cows will wait and be first in line after a wash. They can, they can identify when the system washes. And they'll get up and they'll move and they'll get milked right away. Because they don't want to be milked any other time. So it's kind of interesting how individual the cow's personality becomes, or how much you realize it in a robotic farm. So. We should move to the to the alley.